Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of the first season of Dungeons and Morons, A Timeless March. Let me just say, first and foremost, I've been working on this show for three years now. This has been a, a huge passion project of mine, and it is my pleasure to finally be releasing the first couple of episodes, both here on YouTube and on Patreon. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this show is not perfect by any means. There is a lot, a lot of technical issues, and just bear with us, all right? The, the, the whole premise of this show was for me and my cast and my crew to get better at making TV shows. There's a lot of us on our crew who are aspiring to get into certain fields. We have people who want to become professional cameramen. We have concept artists. We have me who wants to become a scriptwriter for shows. So, this show was meant to be our practice, our practice run. We're gonna mess up a lot, there's gonna be a lot of issues. Bear with us, because by the time we get around to season two, which is filming as we speak, we are going to be fixing and addressing certain issues. And by the time we get to season three, we're gonna learn from even more mistakes. And season four, five, six, seven, whatever. The whole point of this show is for us to make mistakes and learn from them so that we can bring you guys a better TV show. If you want to help support the show, whether it be financially or just by watching it and having fun, we have a Patreon. All the money from our Patreon is going directly back into the show. There's a lot of different options for you to choose on based on your budget. But if you want to support this show, we will gladly, gladly appreciate the help. The more money you give us, the more money goes directly into the show and into the next season and into buying new equipment. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking through this little intro of mine. I just, it had to be said. Ah, that was good enough. There you go. That's how we're gonna sync the audio. Not like a... <laughs> We open on Westbrook High School. It is the science fair. The day that all of the nerds have been looking forward towards. <laughs> the cafeteria is filled to the brim with countless school books, school projects, science fairs. It's just teeming with creativity and really shitty lava projects. But there's one that is the most important. Sitting closest to the stage auditorium is a table with the names Bixby and Connors Presents. The Age of Fire. Not the best name, but it gets the job done. Standing around the project are a young boy named Gerald Bixby, his best friend, Arthur Connors, as well as Arthur's little sister, Ivy. A six-year-old girl with bright red hair. That <laughs> is you. Me, me, that yeah. is you. Uh, as well as Arthur's parents. Gerald begins the demonstration. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this works. Uh, I am I am so nervous. Listen, Gerald, it's gonna be fine. Okay, we got this. Arthur puts a hand on his friend's shoulder, gives him like one of those little like friend massages. Yeah, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, don't worry. All right. Okay. This is the Bixby and Connors Age of Fire. Uh, it takes up a lot of power, but it is a very, very simple premise. Um, right here, I have an apple that I just bought today. Uh, sir, can you make sure that this apple is, is fresh and brand new? Um, Gerald hands the apple to uh, your father. And your dad looks at it and is like, yeah, it seems fresh. Sir, go ahead and take a bite out of the apple so that we know that it's your apple. He's like, okay. Your dad takes a bite out of the apple, hands it back to Gerald. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Gerald takes the bright red apple and puts it on this little platform. Surrounding the platform is a ring of just wires and cords and just the most shoddily made equipment mm -hmm. you could tell it was it was made in gerald's basement yeah with arthur like looking over yeah of course now if everything goes according to plan this machine is going to use up 300 watts of energy just 300 watts 
to take this fresh apple just recently bitten into and age it rapidly in just a matter of seconds. Arthur, would you like to begin? <sighs> All right. So, very simple process. I'm going to take this button right here and press it. There's a moment of silence. Nothing happened. Something's whirring within the machine, but it's, it's really nothing. You see the disappointment start to creep on Gerald's face as he's expecting something to just explode. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> a little purple sphere just encapsulates the apple for a brief second before quickly disappearing and leaving behind a rotten apple core with a bite taken right out of it. Okay. Gerald and Arthur instantly <laughs> hug each other, screaming in delight, jumping up and down like little little giddy kids. Their project worked. Yes, they had yeah. tested it a few times, but it worked. Mm -hmm. And they were excited. Your parents put a hand on Arthur's shoulder like, good job, kiddo. The boys are just eager, eager to get everything started. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I need to go find... Uh, uh, Mr. Hygira and, and, and help him uh, get over here and uh, we did this. We got this. We're doing great. <sighs> Arthur and Gerald go running off uh -huh. and your parents look to you and it's like, so, uh, kiddo, um, your mom and I, we're going to go sit by the side. You mm -hmm. have full reign. Okay. Go okay. explore. Have fun. Just, just, if you need us, we're sitting over there. All right. Okay. Explore. Have fun. All right. Uh, your parents walk away, and you are now alone in this massive science fair. Okay. What is, like, the initial first, other than their science project, which, like, obviously super cool, what is one of the first things I see around me? Uh, right next to them, uh, they, they kept, like, all of the cool projects at the front, because yeah, they you keep it close to the stage, you know, that's where everybody's gonna look. Uh, -huh. uh you have a endless motion machine. That uses magnets that are constantly repelling against each other to just keep a, an item moving and generate energy. Okay. Uh, actually, fun fact, Gerald and uh, the kid who made that constant motion machine worked together so that the energy from that constant motion would power the age of fire. Oh, okay. Very um, cool. You notice, uh, looking on Gerald's thing, uh, go ahead, roll for uh, investigate. Because you're six years old. Some of these concepts are weird for okay. you. Okay. You know, um, six. you got a six. Okay, six. you see a bright red button and a platform that says here with a gross apple on it. Okay, you can do whatever you want. There, everyone's gone. No one's looking at you. So if you want to play with this thing, you totally can. Is there like something I can replace the apple with? Like anything nearby that I can like. Um, you could, there, there are like pens and pencils, uh, there are other kids' projects, uh, there's like a little wadded up stick of gum underneath the desk that they're using on, yes. and also there's just your hand. Yeah, that works. Yeah? That works. Alright, uh, so, uh, you put your hand on the machine. Alright. And, uh, you press the red button. Mm -hmm. Little moments of sound that as it's worrying and then a flash of an instant. Your little kid soft baby hand is now the hand of a full grown adult. It is huge. It is massive. Alright. You hear a voice screaming from across the way. Ivy! Your brother comes running over to you. What did you do? What what what? <laughs> uh Everyone's gonna pick it up, but Jimmy just screamed in the He's background. Okay, he got scared. Yeah, Ivy, what did you do? Okay, uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Um, Arthur starts messing around with the machinery as you are staring at your huge adult I'm like, hand. I'm like laughing, like really, like giddy about the fact that like it's big, <laughs> it's big. Yes, you know, I know. All right, um, put your hand back on the platform. Uh, Arthur takes a little dial, uh, and you can see that it has a grading to it. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts off with the center being at zero, and it goes all the way to 100, and then negative 100 on the other side. Uh -huh. He looks at it, he takes it from 25, and scrolls it all the way back down to negative 25. Uh -huh. He's like, alright, kiddo, do not move. Okay. Keep your hand right there. He actually like fixes it to make sure it's like center of the platform. Oh god, I 
hey, I have any little siblings? Okay. He hits it. Your hand goes back to its normal age. Whoa. Baby, you cannot be messing with things like this, okay? Listen, listen, listen. Okay. I love the fact that, you know, you want to explore, you want to have fun, but like, you know, this is my project, okay? I know you don't understand, but like, I could, I could get into college with this. Mm -hmm. For free. They, they would pay for all of it. Do you, you, you get what I'm saying? What's college? What's college? Um, okay, so you're, you're in preschool, right? Yeah. Imagine preschool, but like, you have to, well, mom and dad do have to pay to get you in. Okay. Imagine preschool, uh -huh. but bigger, and you get to learn whatever you want. You play with your toys? You can play with toys. Toys? You can play with your toys. Yeah. Cool. It's really, it's really cool, cool, but it's expensive. It costs a lot of money. Oh, that's bad. Like, more than, more than $20. That's a lot of money. Exactly. We're gonna, we're gonna use this project, right? Mm-hmm. And Gerald and I, we're gonna we're gonna sell it, and we're gonna we're gonna get like money. It's called a scholarship, Ooh. you know. You know, like, you know, uh, like the Scholastic books, you know, with Clifford. Yeah. Scholastic and scholarship, they're they're similar words. We're gonna get a Scholastic so that we can we can go to we can go to school, you know. Okay. All right. So please, please don't mess with the machine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Arthur's like okay. Um, you know, just, um, okay, you see that volcano over there with, like, all the Legos? Yeah. Go check that out. That's fun. That's okay. fun. Uh, Arthur, Arthur, uh, like, just kind of ushers you away, and then, uh, he goes back to, uh, talking to the judges. Alright. <laughs> and now you're, you're back alone with the, with the whole, uh... um, I, I go to the volcano. <laughs> you go to the volcano. Alright, you can see it's, it's like a... It's one of those very childish science fair projects, you know, the, the, it's, it's the type of kid that, like, just thought of it, like, the day of, uh, he took his Legos, made, like, a, a volcano, you can tell about halfway through, he kind of, like, ran out of Lego pieces, uh -huh. so, like, he's, like, using, like, gray on it for, like, the brown, and he's, like, okay. it adds texture, you know, oh, but he yeah. fully ran out of Legos, um, and, uh, he lines everything up, uh, and he's, like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awesome volcano thing that I just worked on. If you mix chemicals together, you can make it a huge explosion, you know? Watch this. He presses a button. The Lego tower starts to rumble and shake, and it just all falls apart. And then hydrogen peroxide starts spraying up into the air. It's like, ha! Ah, a dumb! Oh! That's what a, a natural spring looks like uh, in nature, you know, like the hot springs. That's what that's what it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ignore the little the little picture of Pompeii. That's not related. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's my that's my presentation. Uh, you see the judge like kind of like nods, writes something down, and they walk away. He's like, "Thank you for your time." Fuck. Okay. Um. This is boring. It was boring. Boring. There are a lot of other science fair projects around. Uh, you have, uh, roll, go ahead and roll perception. All right. Another six. <laughs> you see another volcano across the way. This one isn't made out of Legos. It's paper mache. Okay. You know, so it's, it's a little bit more, more presentable and cooler looking. Oh, yeah. Um, is there anything else? Uh, there's nothing that I didn't see. There, there's a lot of things that, like, you don't really understand what they are. Like, you see, like, a potato with wires sticking out of it, and you don't really know what that is. Um, Mr. Potato Head. It's Mr. Potato Head, yeah. You, somebody made their own little Mr. Potato Head. But, like, a lot of these other things you don't fully understand. Uh, there's, there's one nearby. It's, it's called the Ultimate Grower, right? And essentially what this kid did is he taped three water bottles together. Uh, one with... Seeds, one with dirt, one with water. Okay. And he, he has, like, a little, like, he tapes, like, a little screen to his, like, cardboard thing. Yeah. And it just has a video of him stepping on the water bottles and it just spraying the dirt and water everywhere. And then it's like, this is how we can change, revolutionize growth and agriculture, you know. In just a, one quick step, you can plant an entire garden. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot more projects like that. Nothing compares to how impressive... 
Gerald and Arthur's project is. They spent hours working on it. You remember the multiple power outages in the house. Yeah. Uh, as the two of them were just using up all the energy in the house to make this thing happen. Okay, I'm going to walk back over to it. I'm not going to touch it because I do want to listen to Arthur the best that I can. But I'm just going to like... Can I look at the, the magnetizer one? Sorry, the what? The other one, the magnetize. Oh, the, the constant motion machine? Okay, yeah. uh, so you start to make your way back to the science fair project. Yeah. But you notice that standing in front of your thing is Gerald. Oh. Gerald's looking over his thing, and somebody in a black trench coat towers above Gerald, uh-huh. standing right next to him. You think the two of them are talking, but you're not sure. Okay. Um, but Gerald's, like, you know, pointing at the project, uh, and, like, talking to whoever is in this trench coat. Mm -hmm. It's, it's unclear. Uh, go ahead and roll investigator perception. Okay. Um, let me look at my stats. I get any decent roll, I got a seven. (laughs) You got a seven. The man, the tall man, puts his hand on Gerald's shoulder, mm-hmm. and you see, well, you don't see it, but it it seems like with the lighting, uh-huh. that this man's hand is bright blue. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and everything else in between, and welcome to the very first episode of Dungeons and Morons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that height. Don't break the table. Our first season is titled A Timeless March, because uh, we're going to be doing some weird-ass time-traveling shit with a bunch of our adventurers. Uh, seated here at the table with me today are said adventurers, starting with Bart. Bart. <laughs> Playing his character, Bartold the Brash. Yeah. Uh, we have Amelia Oliveris as Alexander Foxtrot. Yeah. <laughs> we have Jimmy Joseph. But, well, we have Jimmy Parker playing Jimmy Joseph. Yeah. And then we have Tiama, also known as Froggy, playing Ivy Connors. You saw her in the intro just now. Yeah. Um, this is the first episode of the first season of this show. I hope it goes well. In the link down in the bio, we will have a Patreon for you guys to check out if you want to support us making any future seasons. Slay. Uh, slay. 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 Uh, 
at the end of the day, we're all just a bunch of nerds playing D and D, uh, and we're gonna be putting this on YouTube, and we're gonna be putting it on Spotify. If you would prefer a podcast version, fuck. I guess who's ready to play some D and D? Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, roll for initiative. Roll for initiative. <laughs> I know. Just I roll know. for initiative, just for fun. Just roll okay. something. <laughs> it's gonna be uh. How do we? I got a seven. That's Dude, good. as soon as tall. you were rolling no, really well, nine. and then the instant the camera started rolling, you started rolling. I got two terribly. sixes Six? and a seven. Sixteen. That's good, Jimmy. I got nine. Plus, yeah. Plus, okay. Yeah, dude. Uh, I think I kind of get that. Nice. What'd you roll? He got a three. <laughs> <laughs> Since our opening scene, twenty-two years have passed. Ivy Connors went from being a cute, adorable little kid who knew nothing about scientists, science <laughs> to an ecological environmentalist. She has been studying greenery, science. <laughs> Dude, I love greenery. She's love been greenery. studying plants, animals, everything else in between, zoology. She is a professional in her field. Um, long after... Uh, the events of our opening sequence. Mm -hmm. Arthur and Gerald Bixby went to college together. They became good friends. And they were working together constantly on creating a new brand called Bixby and Connors Laboratory. However, a few years have passed and Arthur passed away tragically in a car accident. We now see Ivy, many years later, who, have, who has taken her brother's position at the company. And where do we start off with Ivy? Is she in her apartment or anything? Um, she's getting ready for work. I say it's like super early morning. Mm -hmm. Just got home from like her run. Uh, it is like five a.m. <laughs> like literally, she took like a, a quick three hour, four hour nap, and out the door ready for work. That's like her. That's like a long sleep. Break. You got that Galileo sleep method. Where oh, it's like yeah. Just like twenty minutes a day, and you're fine. Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah. So she took four hours, went for a run, showered, watered all her plants in the apartment. You know, fed her lizard. Uh, go ahead and go ahead and describe Ivy for us. What does she look like? All right. So Ivy has bright red hair. Uh, she's pretty fair in her skin. Uh, she does have like darker under eyes, uh, cause of course she does. Doesn't sleep. Um, you typically will see her wearing like some brown slacks and then like usually like some a dark green shirt or like a a white shirt with her lab coat when she's out for work. Um, she uh she has glasses which she refuses to wear. Um, so she has like these contact lenses she usually wears, um, and. Yeah. Well, as Ivy gets ready for work, she hears out at the door. Bright and early in the morning. Check the doorknob. Standing on the other side of the door, you see your girlfriend, Olivia. Oh, okay. Uh, dark brown hair, uh, sitting there with her arms crossed, and she seems angry for some reason. Okay. Uh, I open the door. There you are. Yeah. I was I was hoping you would be home. Uh, I had no way of telling because uh, <laughs> you haven't been responding to anything, any texts, any calls, any anything. I needed you last night. I missed you. Uh, what what's happened? What's what's going on? Uh, I got home from work late and I fell asleep as soon as I got home. I I didn't see your. It's, it's I know you always, you always just stay home and work like I'm sorry I'm I feel like I'm being dramatic but I am I've felt this way for a long time can we have a talk like just yeah. just you and me, like forget everything else uh, I know you're probably running late or whatever but I I um, uh... I haven't gotten a call from you in months. Yes, we have called, but it's always it's always me who calls you. Mm -hmm. And, like, I've tried to talk to you about this. I, I, I feel like I, I am being left out of your life. Um, I, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I don't want to jump all of this on you. I would rather, you know, talk about it over dinner, but... <sighs> Tried to plan dinner so many times. Okay. Um. I've just 
I've been busy, and I'm not really good with, like, the whole calling thing. Yeah, that's... No, I, I picked up on that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I I know. I know. You're, you're a good person. You're a great person. You, you care about others, but you... Uh, you don't care about yourself enough. When was... When was the last time you took a day off of work to just relax or or to hang out with friends or Well um I took that I took that vacation uh to go visit some national parks. That wasn't a vacation. You were working. I it. went there with you. I it was supposed to be a cute little day, cute little vacation, but the entire time you were taking samples of plants at the park. But, like, I had fun doing it. Isn't that what, like, vacations, like, are? I didn't. I, when I met you, I, 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 I knew what I was getting into, you know? I, I've seen your face on the news, okay? You are, you're popular. You are a hard worker, and I'm so proud of you. So many people look up to you and all the work that you've done. But I, you know, it's my fault for assuming that there there was more than just the work for you. I can, like, try to take more time off. I, I... There's a difference between trying and doing. And I... I've tried to make this work and have both of us be happy and have both of us spend time together, but I... I didn't do it. Do or do not. There is no try. Uh, Yoda, I don't... I'm... I'm sick and tired of trying. I'm... I'm sorry. It, it shouldn't be just you um, trying I be I really care about you I care about you too I don't think that's true I I'm sorry I you're you're really good at what you do and when you are working on something you are an unstoppable force and it is impressive, and it is beautiful. But I've never seen you put that amount of effort into yourself or into other people. You like plants more than you like anybody you know. I'm just, okay, you're, you're running late to work, just, um, call me. We can... We can have a, a, a real conversation about this when you when you get the chance. Yeah, that sounds uh, good. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, for everything. No, I'm I'm sorry too. I I really like you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Uh, Olivia L Olivia leaves the apartment. And, uh, starts heading down the stairs. I get ready for work. You, you, you continue I, getting ready for work? Yeah, I, I'm late. <laughs> you're running late? All right, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not like you're the head of the company and you get to make your own hours, but, like, whatever, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I can't work for that, man. We, we do Fortnite? <laughs> well, as Ivy gets ready for work, we transition over to Disneyland Main Street, USA. Walking down the beautiful, beautiful world of Disneyland, the music is blaring, crowds are running up all over the place, and people are taking photos in front of the castle. Everyone, everybody thinks they're taking a cute family photo, but literally everyone's taking the exact same photo of Cinderella's castle. Um, but walking down Main Street USA in his janitorial outfit is Alex. Alex, go ahead and describe yourself for the party. All right, everyone, Alex is a male dark featured brown hair kind of a little bit of a 
I don't know what kind of mustache you would call it, but he's getting a little bit of facial hair. He's not the best at taking care of himself. The only thing that he really does anything for himself is for his job. Homie is a Disney adult. Hardcore. Hardcore. It's hard to tell if he's really masculine because every time he tries to talk with girls or something like that, he just brings up Disney facts or jokes. <laughs> it's really cringy. Um, he is a janitor at Disneyland, but he really, really, really wants to be a performer. A mascot, per se. Like He wants to be on the stage. He wants to be like a bard. A performer so that's that for personality wise he's kind of a himbo. <laughs> i don't know try to think of like fred from big hero six and <laughs> schmidt yeah. from new girl merged together personality wise. lls ladies love schmidt ladies love schmidt ladies love schmidt that's a little bit about my character alex well speaking of you know being a a, a mascot you know you're running late your audition is in 30 minutes, and you are just barely in Main Town, USA. You have to book it all the way down to Toontown okay, real quick. Yep. Uh, go ahead and um, roll for... Roll for athletics. Athletics. Uh, 14. All right, you start booking it down down Disneyland. You know, I know the exact way to get there. Yeah, you know Disneyland like the back of your hand. You know the fastest routes to every line. Mm -hmm. uh, you start sliding and squeezing in between guests at the at the parks, and uh, you make it. Do you are you pulling up the Disneyland map right now? <laughs> Gotta check out the best way to get there, bro. <laughs> down Main Street through the castle, not by Thunder Mountain. Okay, no. What's the wait time for Thunder Mountain right, right now? Right now, fifty minutes. It's open. Yeah, it's that's fucking rare. Disneyland open. Thunder, Thunder oh, every single time I'm Yeah, it always breaks down. down. Yeah, but yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, anyways, you start booking, dodging and weaving in between guests. Uh, you know, you squeeze past the churro cart. Uh, you know, uh, your buddy Pedro working at the the churro cart nods at you as you as you run by. Uh, do you have your Air AirPods in there? I do now? have some AirPods in. Yeah, I'm listening to some really hot jams right now. Hot jams. All right, so you, you start making your way down towards Toontown, and uh, hidden in the Toontown walls are many secrets, many doors. It's towards the back of the park. I've actually been there, yeah. Yeah, so um, you go up to one of the walls, and uh, you see Alice, one of the other janitorial staff, uh, working there. She's, like, sweeping things up right in front of this this doorish wall, you know? Mm -hmm. Yo, Alice, this is it. This is the day. Hey, hey, um, Alex. Yeah. Do you know what I'm about to do to you? What? What's that? Dude, I'm about to have an audition. Audition? It's time to move up from this, you know? For, uh, for, for which character, huh? I mean, anyone I can get. I like, I can do anything, like Peter Pan, like, maybe some... Like Little Bo Peep, huh? <sighs> yeah. If they want me to, you know what I mean? Alice rolls her eyes. Um, yeah, sure. Here. Uh, Alice goes over to um, what looks like just like a nice little hilly zone in Toontown. She grabs one of the hills, pulls it open to reveal like a little door behind it. Uh, and uh, you walk on through Thank to you. the back lots of Disneyland. Uh, you, there's a lot of areas back here. Uh, it's, you know, staff parking. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the janitorial area up in, up in here too. Um uh, but further to the back is the Disney dance hall and audition room. Got it. Yeah. I'm um, a little bit lost sometimes, but I think I can find it. Uh, you start to make your way back, and uh, you see sitting in front of the door is just a long line of, you know, men, women, everyone just looking to get their parts. You see this short girl with nice blonde hair, really, re really, like, up cheekbones. She is a perfect fit for Tinkerbell and you see her just sitting there looking over lines you know she's like doing hand gestures that are like very lofty and wavy she's just talking to herself she's really in the zone uh along with her or a bunch of other people uh you have this like frat girl looking dude who's like pretending to be drunk he's like I got a job dude I got a job dude that's what you gotta do man you have to get into that method acting dude yes Perfect. yes that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about here dude if he's actually drunk. Um, Anyways. So you're sitting there, uh, you're reviewing uh, everything, and uh, you see, uh, as you're waiting, the door opens up. 
And uh, this short, red-haired kid is walking by with a giant Nemo costume, like, in his arm. It's like, so, these are the new recruits. Hello, everybody. You're you're looking to become a Disney mascot, huh? Huh? I know you. You're that, you're that janitor kid from Tomorrowland, aren't you? Tomorrowland, yeah. I'm a jungle cruise sometimes. Jungle cruise? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I bet it's, it's very difficult to clean my jungle cruise. Yeah, it's like one of the most crowded. Yeah, who are you going for, huh? Who, who you got this thing for? I mean, I like Peter Pan. You like Peter Pan? You know, Peter Pan's usually played by a girl. I mean, you look like a girl, so it works. Ah. Uh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, 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 you, hey, I'm talking to you, okay? Dude. I'm the mascot here, okay? I can put in a good word with, you know, the producers and everything and, like, get you apart, okay? You want that? More what? than anything. You want that? Yes. Really? <laughs> you know what? Actually, I have this little, like, it's a little thing that we give to, like, all the newbies, you know, people who, who, who really want to be, like, mascots like me, you know? You know, I'm Nemo, you know? I'm, I'm the Nemo. I, you see me, like, swinging along the, the zip line? Do you know any other kids who can do that? No, it's just me, okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna sew you, all right? I got this little present. Oh my god, just show me the thing! I'm gonna sew it to you! Be patient, okay? Here, just for you, a little, a little... Trade secret? Boom! Oh, wait, wait! Oh, 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 boom! Oh, my God! Oh, dude! Was, look, it's like Chef Woody. He's got his guns. Pew, 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 pew! You want to be Woody? You want to be Woody? Oh, here you go! Here you, oh, uh... Yeah. I swing at him. You swing at... You swing at me? All right. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm, roll right for next I'm listening to Make a you Man right now, bitch. You can't fuck with me. <laughs> Mr. Uh... Go ahead. Roll for next How do you... Asshole. Oh, is that an 8 or a 20? Uh, re-roll. Yeah, re-roll. Re-roll, re-roll. re-roll. I think it'd be funny if you got in that 20. <laughs> roll for what again? Dexterity. You said. 6. You were rolled a fucking nat 20. Oh. <laughs> Nemo was built. I was showing it to you right now. Nemo rolled a nat 20. First nat 20 in the game. Hey. Nemo dodges and weaves. Oh, oh, you think you can come after me? Okay, I'm Nemo, okay? Nemo's like, I'm a little tiny fish, I'm a little tiny. I, you seen that movie? You see? You have to be fast oh my God. to be Nemo. Oh my God. All no, right? To be you gotta get Nemo. to the You're the only fucking Nemo in this park, dude. I'm gonna tell my mom on you. <laughs> you know, see? She's in charge of casting. I'm gonna tell my mom on you. She's the what? She's in charge of casting. She's in charge of what? Casting. Casting? Dude, I'm sorry. Okay, wait. Your mom's actually the head of. Shut up! I just tried to hit a kid. Nemo storms off, uh, and as he's storming off, he like tries to put on the Nemo outfit like over his head, and he just like starts stumbling and he hits into a wall. I just he's realized like, you didn't see that. <laughs> I also realized that everyone around me that was waiting in line was also watching. Uh, Tinkerbell looks up and she's like, "Oh, um, okay, yeah." Uh, and then Jack Sparrow's like, ah, that kid fucking deserves it. Oh, man. That was intense. Why does this guy start? Uh, right as you say that, the door opens up, and, uh, you see a taller, red-headed woman. She kind of looks like the Nemo kid, and she goes, Alex Foxtrot, reading for Peter Pan. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you gonna wear earbuds during the audition? It's just a... I don't know, it calms me. Am I gonna wear my janitor outfit too, you know? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, you go inside, and um, it is a large, like, kind of dance hall. You know, you have a wall that's just all mirrors, and sitting at a long table are five Disney executives. Right front and center is somebody who you... you, you actually, go ahead, roll a history check. Fourteen... Sorry. Sixteen. So someone you recognize as Bob Iger is sitting front and center. Um, you know recently, uh, because you, you've been working at Disneyland and you've been working around, the mascots haven't been as good recently, okay? Like, you know, we've been trying to, like, up engagement and stuff, but, like, we have had issues. 
we we put out a casting call for our Jack Sparrow because he was constantly actually drunk, you know, and all of our princesses are just so bratty. So they are they are cracking down hard to figure out the perfect mascots, both on and off of the park grounds. Around him are, uh, you know, other casting directors. Uh, you know one of them as uh, the choreographer for parades. Uh, and the other one is the head of casting, also known as the Mom of Nemo. Uh, so, Alex, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to us. Um... <clears throat> hi, uh, hi, I'm Alex, uh, Alex Foxtrot. Uh, I'm going to be reading some lines for Harry, Harry Potter, I mean, Peter Pan. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Do I like, uh, <laughs> do I get like a piece of paper or like, like read something? Or... Um, you, did you prepare a song? Or, uh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a song. Yeah, right here. Right here. Here you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Whenever you're ready. Thank you. Uh, you see they have like a little camera and they just start recording. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Off to Neverland. Hi there. How you doing? When there's a smile in your heart, there's no better time to start. This goes on for like a good three minutes. Yeah, we're familiar. We're familiar with the song. And, uh, I mean, he thinks he's rocking it. He's pulling every single line from the book, you know, trying to recite just the movie itself. It's a little confusing. You can tell it's his first time. But he thinks he's killing it. And then he, he sees them talking to each other. He gets a... A little bit nervous, but he still tries to put on a good face. And uh, go a, ahead and roll a performance check. Performance check? Okay. 17. 17? Alright, um, Alex? Yes. So, yes. <laughs> uh, you're familiar with the fact that uh, when we do Peter Pan, we typically cast uh, a woman in the role. Yeah, I mean, I totally get it. And I also have heard complaints about it. I mean, I don't care. I mean, you know, I love women. I mean, I don't love women. I, I, I mean, I do love women. Roll charisma check right fucking now. <laughs> Roll charisma check. Flat charisma <laughs> right fucking now. <laughs> oh. 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 Where is Plus it? Four. Plus four? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 19. Oh. Yeah, you know, and I just start... Bob Hager just like nods his head. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? And I'll listen, dude. I'm a gender. And I know you look at me and you think, uh, who knows? What's this guy gotta give? But Sir, Disneyland is everything to me. And I love cleaning the bathrooms and walking around being crowd control sometimes, but You're a janitor? Yeah. Where are you stationed? Tomorrowland. You know, Tomorrowland, you know, our the whole premise behind Tomorrowland is that um you know, it's futuristic. It's clean. It's sleek. You know. Right. We got Star Tours. We got Space Mountain down there. We used to have like that Michael Jackson movie, but you know, yeah. Um, but uh, it's clean, and I'll give that to you. It is clean. Yes, sir. You know, I. The only instances I've ever seen something dirty is you know in the lines for the rides. You know, but you know there there's nothing you can really do about that until closing. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I totally get it. You know, uh, listen, kid. Yeah. We have, we have some openings. Uh, how good are you at dancing? Dancing? I, I mean, I've had dancing experience. I can learn things. Just give me, like, 24 hours, you know? <laughs> I mean. Um, something that, uh, go. So... In our parade, uh, we you know we have our, our typical mascots, but we also have smaller roles. Are you are you all right with a, like a like a smaller role? Smaller role. I mean, yeah, yeah. Do you get dizzy easily? Dizzy. I mean, if it's a Sunday morning, maybe a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we have an opening for. Um, uh, are you familiar with our Alice in Wonderland float? And yeah, very. So typically, when we have like one of the floats come in, mm -hmm. uh, we have 
little costume characters, like these dancing flowers. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah I love that parade. So we have an opening for a spinning teapot. Um, and you, how tall are you? Uh, I'm like six foot one. Okay, so she's he's he is six foot. Um, a teacup. You know what? We're just. Uh, Cynthia is going to hand you a little piece of paper with a link on it. Okay. Uh, go ahead, review that choreography. Yeah, yeah. Come back in like maybe like a week. Do you think you can do that? A week, same place, same time. Or uh, yeah, this is the dance studio. Okay, so. yeah, I, I get it, sir. You won't regret this. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, shakes his hand, shakes all of their hands. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You know, have you heard of uh, lapograms? Sorry, Walt Disney. Walt Disney. You know, before he like made this place, lapograms. I'm I'm familiar. Yes. Yeah, you know he got fired from it. You know why? What's that? For lack of imagination. Alex just walks out. <laughs> just <laughs> dips. Another pointless Disney joke. And yeah. He sees the Nemo kid on the way out. Listen, kid, listen. I'm I'm sorry about how I acted earlier. But I got it! I got it! I got a teapot, dude! I'm so fucking pumped. You got a fucking teapot. I got a fucking teapot, dude. You don't think that's fucking cool? You know, whatever. I'm not listening to advice from a kid right now. Okay? He puts his deal pots back in. Let's get down to business. She walks off. And, uh... <laughs> oh, that was great. As you start to leave the Disneyland premises, uh, you get a call on your phone. Uh... You see it is from Richard Foxtrot, a.k.a. Dad. What's up, Dad? Where are you? What do you mean, where I always am? I just got back from my audition, now. I know. I'm waiting out front. I need I need you to... You said you needed a ride home? Yeah, yeah. I felt okay, sick. I need to make a stop somewhere. Just please get in the car. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting out front. Um, I, I, I see one of your, one of your coworkers, uh... Uh, I, what I think your name's Alice. Yeah, Alex. Alice. Alice. She works in the front. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm parked by her. Uh, oh. up near the front. I mean, I got an audition today. All right. Cool. Uh, we need to go. Uh, pick up the pace. He hangs up the phone. Uh, go ahead. Roll perception. Uh, five. Uh, you find this car. Yeah, it is a nice. Nice car. Mm -hmm. It is sleek black. All the windows are tinted. He is he's living the life. Yes. All right. Um. You you go into the car, and uh, your dad is sitting at the steering wheel. Hi, dad. Hey, kiddo. All right. Uh, we have to make a quick stop on the way. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're 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 fine. Um, we're gonna go to a laboratory. Just it's gonna be fine. A laboratory. I, it's for work. Just, just don't touch anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Cool. Uh, so he throws the car in reverse, starts backing out of the parking structure, uh, and you guys get on the freeway and start heading into Central LA. Uh, your dad just is very quiet, staring at the road, focused on driving. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, I did have an audition today. Uh huh. I told you about last week. I was just, you know, tired of being a, a janitor. I wanted to. Alex sees that his dad isn't really interested in what he's talking about. He's never really been interested in anything he has to say. So he kind of just goes quiet. He kind of knows that, like, nothing his dad, nothing he says will get his dad's attention. So he, like, doesn't talk and see if he even notices. Um, your dad does notice, um, and, uh, rather than, you know, try and get, engage in conversation, your dad just flicks on the radio, uh, and starts playing music, uh, as he continues to drive on the freeway, staring forward. So, um, you, um, you put in any thought into the, um, that internship with me, um, uh, with the company? 
Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I have. It's kind of a big deal that I'm not really a science guy. Uh, well, you know, you don't have to focus on any specific field. You're just an intern, okay? You yeah. know how to make coffee. Yeah, I know how to make coffee. Exactly. You're you're perfect for the job. But the lab and everything, that's not really, like, where I want to be. It's you know? not. We have other, you know, facilities that we work through. You know, we're just investing, okay? I can teach you all of this, all right? You know. What, about, like, stocks and about... Yes. Money. Exactly. Overpowering people. Listen, I will pay for you to get a degree, okay? A degree in what? No, a degree in what? Business, economics, something that is useful, okay? I can get you a job at a company. Dad, I would want a degree, but it's not in economics or business. It's in fine arts. It's in performing, you know? I mean... Listen, kiddo, I get it, you know? You want to... You want to tell stories? It's fine. It's fine by me. You can do that. As it's a fun hobby. But you need a real job. And I'm, I'm offering you this lifeline. You know, today, when we go to the lab, normally I tell you to stay in the car, but this time you can come in with me, okay? Just shadow me. Watch what I do, and you can see that it is, it is a job that you should be excited for, you know? You can make some real money. You can help the family, okay? Dad turns off the radio and continues driving. All right, uh, so we return to the, we enter Bixby and Connor's laboratory. It is a nice, nice building. Uh, you have many different floors, but the main central area, you open it up, huge white entry place. Uh, you have a little front reception desk, uh, but deeper on you have Gerald's lab, your lab, and a huge, beautiful garden right in between the two of them. Um, sitting at the front re reception desk is Jimmy. Jimmy Joseph. Go ahead and describe your character for everybody. Male, 19. <laughs> <laughs> I might have his 5'11, but I think it went to 5'10. I don't need shrug. <laughs> um, dirty blonde hair, white, hazel green eyes. He kind of looks just like this. <laughs> yeah. Homie needs a cheat sheet to know how he looks in a mirror. <laughs> well, you don't have a mirror. <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, you said you were I forgot to bring the mirror. He pulls up the camera up. He's like, oh, uh, he has blonde hair. It's kind of like a freckle, right? There. <laughs> <laughs> uh... So, Drew Joseph, he is uh, dressed in his laboratory uh, suit. He always has a backpack on him for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And uh, he's sitting at the front reception desk. On his hands are two special gloves that you yourself have made custom. They are these fingerless gloves with little track pads, buttons on the back, and wires strewn about everywhere. You know, they're just a prototype, but they are your JJ gloves, and they are what you use for, you know, all the things that you do around the office. You want to wrench from over there? Swing it over, right over to you. Um, and uh, as you walk in, uh, Ivy enters the uh, the workplace. Hey. What's up? What have you been up to? Nothing much. For the, the, how the gloves done? All right. Uh, any progress on anything? Eh. Hey, Jimmy, uh, can I get you in here real quick? Uh, the door to Gerald's laboratory opens, and you can see something has happened, like, some sort of explosion <laughs> happened, and his arms and face are covered in soot. He's like, Jimmy, I need you in here real quick. Uh, hey, Ivy, morning. Um. Morning. Jimmy, uh, I need your help real quick. Okay. Uh, you go into Gerald's lab. Uh, we will start off by following Ivy. Ivy, uh, you have your laboratory and the huge garden. Uh, Gerald's lab has a huge door, uh, but a sign that says Gerald and Jimmy only. He, he, he's like the, that no girls allowed type thing, you know? Yeah, that's like 
It's, I'm used to it. He's very secretive with his work. Yeah. You know, ever since, ever since losing Arthur, he's he's really kind of shut off. Much everyone. more reserved than yeah. he used to be. But what can you do? Um, I'm like, I'm mostly here in the sense of like, I'm still thinking about what happened with Olivia because I mean it just happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm like thinking about that. Um, I know we have a meeting with the investor coming up, so I'm like trying to prepare everything, make sure everything looks nice, going over like other people's work, showing what we're gonna like show him that we've been working on, all that stuff. That's kind of what I mm-hmm. get going on. Um, so you're gonna go to your office? Yeah. Okay. Uh, as you start to kind of walk by the lab, uh, you hear like little little grumblings in the uh, in the garden. You hear little tiny voices like, "Hey, fuck you!" <laughs> <laughs> what and the like, fuck? Hey, back off, buddy! Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I walk over to the voice. Uh, you have this little tiny pen area, and inside of it are these three little mushroom creatures. Uh, it's like Toadstool mushrooms, you have a red toadstool, blue, green, and purple. Uh, they're little cute guys, small eyes, big little smile, and just these little tiny ones. Uh, and you notice that um, the purple and green... Purple and green toadstools, waffles and bacon... Gotcha. Uh, ...are standing on the other side of the pig pen as uh, they have essentially cornered hash brown and... Uh, in one side of the pen as Pancakes watches on. Uh, Hey, guys, uh, please, uh, please leave me alone. Ivy, Ivy, you're here. As soon as he says Ivy, uh, Waffles and Bacon just immediately stop what they're doing and they're, they, like, help uh, Hash Brown off, like, pat him down. Like, it's like, uh, (laughs) hey, Ivy, we were just, uh, we were, we were, we were having fun. We were messing around. What was happening? What? What, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Just, uh, just you know, just us hanging out with Hash Brown. You know, uh, we, 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 we get bored here in the pit without you. So, uh, we just, we play games. And he's like, Hash Brown just, like, kind of, like, nods, like, yeah. Uh, pancakes. I, I, like, pick up Hash Brown so I can talk to him later. Yeah. Uh, but uh, something still. Pancakes just says, they're dickheads. <laughs> 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 what are you, uh, pancakes? What are you talking about? Uh, pancakes is the blue toadstool. Uh, he is often very reserved, very quiet, sits in the corner. Um, they won't leave Hash Brown alone. What? Well, of course, he's our brother. We love Hash Brown. Pancakes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> What, why are you guys being mean to your brother? We're not being mean to anybody! Pancakes is making things up! It was like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Why yeah. would he, Why would he lie, though? Oh, because I'm bored. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um... <laughs> Uh, we're, we were wondering if we could, um, get, like, a larger pet, or maybe... Maybe like a different, two different pens, you know, that way there's more room for, uh, for like some of us to like, you know, move around and, and not worry about bumping into anybody else. You know, Pancakes like kind of like nods at you. Yeah. Uh, I think I was going to get, I have been trying I'm, they're coming in right now. Mm, it's been yeah. a while through shipping, but, uh, Pancakes and Hash Brown are, are going to get a pen. You guys are going to get a pen. We're going to get our own room? <gasps> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, waffles and bacon are like they're 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 very giddy. They're very excited about getting their own room, um, but uh, you you're still holding hash brown. Hash brown is like kind of like nuzzles into your chest, like kind of hiding his face. <laughs> um, pancakes just kind of want Yeah. Um, well, waffles and bacon. They they continue with their rough housing and like uh-huh. beating each other up. Do you have any like toys for them that I can like put in the pen? Uh, you, you have, uh, the garden is full of things. Okay. Uh, you could open their pin and just let them freely explore the gardens. Uh, however, last time they did, they, uh, they got in a little, a little spiff, a little argument with, uh, with some of the, the tree creatures. I, yeah, I have a feeling it's gonna go badly again. 
And since the investors are coming, I would rather have everything go as smoothly as possible for today. So I'm just gonna like try to maybe go and look up a little plants, give them like a couple of their toys, their little stuffies that they have, and like cover up the thing. Yeah, uh, so you you throw some things into the pan, you throw some food, uh, waffles yeah. and bacon just like hop on the food. They start grubbing hard. I give stuff like specifically to Pancake. Yeah, Pancake's like. Just nods. Yeah. Um, throughout the um, gardens, you have a lot of different creatures, organisms. Uh, you have this like species of like glowing butterfly that like not only are they beautiful colors like butterflies typically they are, but they glow in the dark. You have spent a lot of your time finding the species that nobody else is willing to look for. Uh, or species that have gone near extinct. You are all about conservation. You are about conserving both, you know, typical life forms, you know, make sure the Arctic doesn't melt, uh, make sure the forests aren't chopped down. But also, you spend a lot of time focusing on the magical, the magical creatures. Um, In a corner of the garden, you see uh, these tall trees uh, with faces right in the middle. Think think like the the tree from Rainforest Cafe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tracy tree. Tracy tree. Tracy, Tracy tree. tree. Uh-uh. <laughs> hey, when are we gonna get some toys over here? All right. Hey, open up the sunroof. We need some sunlight in here. We're tired. Yorker trees. <laughs> yeah, they're not native. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. Uh, I open up the sunroof. Yes, feed me, daddy. You know okay, the sun starts beaming weird. down on one of the trees. The tree's like. Thanks, sugar tuts, you know. Don't make it weird. I will close the sunroof. Hey, hey, hey! You're the one who took us into your home, okay? I am respectful of you as long as you are respectful of me. I respect women. (laughs) I'm a (laughs) trick. That that wasn't what I was saying, but yeah. Well, do you want me to not respect women? No, please respect women. Listen, humans are fine. All right, we like you. Okay. You're one of the likable humans. Thank you. I still think it's kind of fucking weird that you name us all after breakfast food, but whatever, all right? I didn't eat, okay? <laughs> I was hungry. Hey, okay, listen, it's fine, but like, eggs over there is kind of, he got kind of the brunt of the names, but at least he's not sausage, you know? <laughs> it's kind of funny. It is kind of funny. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, so you have certain certain creatures in this garden do talk, certain of them don't. Yeah. Uh, you have, like, uh, the really fast snails. Uh, they're uh, just, they yeah. move at, like, an insane rate. Like turbo. Yeah, like turbo. Uh, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds snail. Um, but, like, it, it, it's a very well-rounded ecosystem just within its own little laboratory that you have. And on the other side is your office. Bartold. Oh, oh. Bartold, you wake up to the muffled sounds of stomping, thudding, walking, doors opening and closing. You have a migraine like a motherfucker. God, where am I? You wake up in this giant test tube. The walls are unbreakable, and you are basically in your underwear. I'm gonna start sliding out the test tube. Uh, go ahead and make a strength check. Oh god, that one. one! Oh my <laughs> god! It's so it begins! Oh my god. Oh, it's you, idiot. you punch the side of the test tube and instantly <sighs> sparks of electricity and lightning emanate out of your fist. You are good at punching. <sighs> That's your whole job. You slam to the side of it and instead of making a single dent in the test tube, it seems like all the electricity from your punch goes into the walls and just disperses. You hear a little Go ahead and describe your character for us. Barthold is a uh, he's 5'10, he's uh, he is bl- it's like a dirty blonde. I think he's a dirty blonde. He is uh, he's he is a white man, but he's like tan from the just being outside and battling a lot and training. Yeah. And he he's built he's built shredded shredded dude. He has I he has a lot of scars from battle. Mhm. Yeah. Around your neck, 
you have a necklace, an amulet of sorts, of Milnir, the Hammer of Thor. You notice that for once, you don't feel anything coming from this amulet. It feels dull. It feels like something's wrong. Like Thor isn't with me. Bartold, you hear the footsteps get closer and approaching you is a lanky man. Uh, blonde hair, dirty, dirty blonde like yourself, but it is, it is graying. The man has a receding hairline and he's dressed up in a lab coat with one prosthetic robotic leg. Something you, you have never seen before. You've seen men without legs, but you've never seen men with electronic moving legs like the ones that he has. I'm going to keep pounding it. Where am I? Good morning. Hi. My name's Gerald. Where am I? Where? What is this Don't place? worry. Don't worry. You're here to help. Welcome to, uh, to my laboratory. Laboratory. Yeah. What is that? Are you, are you a man of science, sir? What? That sounds like something the Greeks did. Or something, <laughs> is this something more magical for you? I use magic. I am a conduit of my god. God. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so, again, like I said, the name is Gerald. Gerald Bixby. Uh, you are my guest here. Uh, it doesn't feel like a guest. Trust me, you, you are. All right. You're always welcome, and uh, you're gonna be you're gonna be staying here for a little while. Can I make an inside check on me? Go ahead and make an inside check. Got a plus two. Uh, that's gonna be a twenty-one. Oh, there are twenty-one. Nice. You do not trust this man. You see something in his eyes. Something. This. Not only is he planning something, but he is longing for it. I'm, I'm not going to try and bother explaining things for you. You you don't seem like the type, you know? You don't seem like you would understand what I'm trying to go for here. Um, but um, me and my assistant, Jimmy. Uh, hey, Jimmy. Oh? Uh -huh. We have been working together on crafting a machine. And you, my friend, you're going to be its battery. I don't think I want that. Trust me, trust me. This was this will benefit mankind as a whole. Have you ever made a mistake, my friend? Many. It is one of the inevitabilities of being a leader. Exactly. You understand. All of your your lost men and soldiers, I pinpointed you. I saw you. I saw a map of everything that will be and everything that has been. And no one has such a spark like you do. You get what I'm going for? I am going to crush you. Oh, you're, you're gonna crush me. That's so cute. Jimmy, fire up the machine, please. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy, in front of you, you see a bunch of switches, levers, boxes, everything that is meant to power on all of Gerald's many different projects. But right in front of you is a blinking red button that says charge. You and Gerald have made this agreement. As long as you help him with this project, he will grant you everything you need. The robotics that you use to create your gloves, your JJ gloves, the things that grant you power and your abilities, he funded those. He helped you make those. He crafted the prototype for you. All of the explosives that you love to work with, he has provided everything for you. Just in exchange for you to press this glowing red button. I want to press it. Jimmy slams his hand down on the red button and Bartold, the tube around you, begins to heat up. The floors start to burn the bottom of your feet. All of a sudden, you just feel, you feel like you're being drained out of something. 
Uh, go ahead and make a constitution check. Constitution. Uh, 19, 19 plus 23. 23. You stay standing, but you feel your power begins to wane. You don't have Thor in your amulet telling you what to do. You, the electricity starts to be pulled from your body. Just like with that punch in the side of the test tube wall, the electricity starts to leave you and starts going into the walls of the test tube. Filling it up, and you hear that sound again. But so it's like a bar. Mm -hmm. right. uh, you feel your energy, your life force. The thing that has been driving you for years is being pulled out of you. The electricity is fueling something. You don't quite understand what it is. And the two of you, you see Gerald standing there with a huge grin on his face. I go into a rage. <laughs> Oh, please. I, I mean, I gotta go into a rage. Go into a rage. What are you gonna do? Uh, I mean, I, it's, a, a rage is just I get advantage on strength, uh, checks and saves. I mean, I guess I'm gonna pound on the, the glass again. Yeah, go ahead. Let roll, me out! Roll for strength. Uh, I'm gonna use this one. Oh, 16. I have advantage, so uh, that's gonna be 16 or... Oh yeah, so 16 plus mm -hmm. 21. You start pounding, pounding. Ah! Every time you punch, your eyes light up, blue, electricity sparking out of you. Pound the wall. It gets absorbed by the test tube over and over and over again. Every time you punch the wall. <laughs> Gerald does not stop laughing. He is so happy right now. And you keep punching over and over. I'm gonna kill you! Over again. We go to the outside of the Connors and Bigsby laboratory. What the fuck? <laughs> what? Do you think Gerald's hard? <laughs> <laughs> Fully around. Uh, hold on. Roll for boner. You can't get one, it's an out one. <laughs> he's, in he's an old guy, he can't get it up sometimes. He's, uh, he's like. <laughs> Uh, anyways, we go to the outside of Bixby and Connor's laboratory, mm -hmm. and Richard Foxtrot and his son Alex Foxtrot are entering the building. <laughs> Alright kid, remember, don't touch anything, okay? You can look, just don't touch, and just shadow me, okay? Yeah, got it. This is supposed to be fun, okay, bud? Okay, got it. Thank you. <sighs> Richard fixes his tie. How do I look? How do I look? <laughs> you and your father go into the building. Um, Ivy, you are there at the front entrance to greet them. Hi. Uh, hi. Hi, Mr. Foxtrot. It's so nice to see you. You're Connors. Yes. Okay. Nice to meet you, too. Is Big Spear around? He's currently wor working on a project right now. He doesn't like to be disturbed. At yes, time. I know. That's yes, why I'm that. here. He said he wanted to do a demonstration for me. Um, I can try to check in with him. Um, yeah, uh, just... Well, by the way, this is my son, Alex. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Uh, he's, he's... There isn't anything too confidential here. He, he won't tell anyone. He's he's here to watch. He's, he's, he's a part of the business. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, He'll just be good. taking notes. Taking notes. That's me. I'm taking notes. Um, you know, while, while Bixby works, just, uh, go ahead. Uh, show, us, show us what you've been working on recently. All right. So I'm going to... Can I walk him through, like, the side end? Yeah, go right ahead. All right. So we have been working... I specifically work more on our environmental uh, issues. Uh, I focus much more on our conservation here. Mm -hmm. So I like working with the magic and a little bit more, like, environmental issues. Um, so through our garden, you see a lot more uh, magic species of animals, um, just a lot more uh, diversity in our nature. Okay, interesting. Um, and uh, what are these little guys? Uh, he points at the uh, mooshlings, the little the little mushrooms. Yeah. Uh, and you see bacon and waffles. Uh, what is what is hash browns AC? 
No. What the heck? No. Don't do this. Eleven. That is an eleven exactly. Oh Fucking my god. Christ. Oh. Bacon goes up to Hash Brown and is like, hey, hey, we get it. Okay, you're the favorite. Okay, little Hash Brown, little baby. Oh, little baby, little Hash Brown. Oh, I'm mom's favorite. Yeah, well, guess what? Okay. Me and Waffles are sick and tired of you, okay? You think you're so cute? You think you're so innocent? We have been here since day one. We were a mistake made by this lady, right? Hashron takes seven Ooh. damage. Ooh. He's 11 total. Oh, God. So that's four now? Yeah, that's four. Um... <laughs> Bacon smiles as Hashbrown like kind of stumbles back into the ground. Um, uh, Pancakes steps in, pushes himself in between Bacon and Waffles. Um, all right. Um, Waffles steps in between Bacon and pushes him back. Bacon stumbles backwards like, hey, fuck you, all right? This has nothing to do with you, you little emo, little mushroom, huh? Just leave us alone. Richard just watches, and he's just like, So this experiment is... A work in progress. Um, these are... They're... they're Mushrooms. I was investigating them. Uh, to see how we can use maybe mushrooms more for medicine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it did go a little wrong, but now uh, I'm seeing what I can do with them. So medicinal fungi yes. is brought to life, essentially. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. You see, he yes. starts to write something down. <laughs> Hash runs crying in the corner. Can I, like... Do I have a like a, a place where I can I put hash brown somewhere separate, or like can I put can, can I put hash brown somewhere else so it's a little more safe? Maybe um, even pancakes if there's enough space. But uh yeah, well you can just let them free in the. I don't. I don't. Uh maybe hash brown. I'll let hash brown out because I trust. Okay. I trust him. <laughs> uh so yeah. you you pick up hash brown. Hash brown like kind of nuzzles up into you and makes you feel like cute. Okay. Uh, he, uh, you see, like, takes a little picture, um, and just puts it, puts his phone down. Uh, you put Hash Brown down, and Hash Brown immediately, like, starts to run, uh, to the other side of the garden with, uh, the glowing butterflies. Uh, and, you know, Hash Brown starts giggling, and, like, they, they, like, land on his, his, like, not nose, but where a nose should be. Uh, and he's like, Um, so, uh, you continue with the tour. Uh, Alex, are you are you still following with this tour? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just taken back. Those are those are real. Yeah. Those are real mushrooms. Yes. That could talk. Yep. I I focus in uh environmental magic. Yeah. So that's Listen, cool. so we'll, we'll, <gasps> it's pretty cool. We'll save questions for the end. Uh, continue with your tour. Yeah, and then I show them around like the trees. Hey, forget about it, baby. Whoa, what the fuck? Hey, what's up with you? <laughs> oh, what's up? I like a little beach fuzz, buddy. Huh? <laughs> Take you. You're working, on, you're working on a real mustache? A I real mean, man? What? I'm a tree. Uh, yeah, I hey, see uh, that. Uh, I can grow a mustache real quick. Watch this, watch this. And then just like a, a bunch of like leaves pop out be- beneath like the tree's nose. It's like, hey, look at us with must- mustache brothers. <laughs> Alex is like still internalizing that he didn't call him a real man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's up? Hey, who's this? Who's this suit? Um. Richard Foxtrot, nice to nice to make your acquaintance. I don't have hands, buddy, uh, but it's uh, it's nice to see that you got one. Uh, I would shake it if I could. I'm a tree, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sir. I noticed that. Um, the, these are our. Uh, this is our investor. 
um, one of our investors taking a look about uh, all the work I've been doing uh, along with So Gerald. do all of your experiments end up talking or is it just, you know, the ones that you've shown me so far? Uh, it's mostly just the ones that... It's just the ones we've looked at here. Are you planning on profitizing off of this? Like, you know, like, I, I could see a future where these, like, mushroom creatures are, like, a household pet. However, you know, you don't want to have them, like, eating the dog, like, get the dog eating them, you know? Yeah, it, it's more uh, to see what they can do for the sake of nature. Um, but and what they can do is grow mustaches. Um, hey, well, it's a pretty can... good mustache. You gotta well, it's this guy whole, knows what I'm talking it's about. It's a rapid growth. If that's if you take a look at it, that I, I can tell you something about rapid growth. Okay. Um. Yeah. So <laughs> that's just a little bit of what we have here. Just at that moment, uh, you see the lights begin to flicker, and Gerald's doors open for his laboratory, and Gerald and Jimmy step out of the laboratory. Uh, you hear pounding, thudding, and screaming what from the, the inside. A very muffled tone. It's like, Mr. Foxtrot, nice to see you again. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, you are here for the demonstration, correct? Um, yes. Uh, yes, I am, Gerald. Um, so, sorry about all that. I was like, I just watched um, a tree maybe hit on my son, and I don't know what's happening. It's cool, man. It's fine. Hi. Uh, Gerald Bixby, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Alex. Friend of Richard is a friend of mine. Um, so, uh, Mr. Foxtrot, um, what I'm about to show you is highly confidential. We ask that you leave all phones, all everything outside. Uh, just leave it on the front desk. Uh, my assistant Jimmy will take care of it. Nothing's going to get stolen, don't worry. Um, and uh, your boy is welcome to come. Just <laughs> can't tell anyone, all right? Why can't I tell anyone? This is this is very sensitive information, son. Just, just I'm the question guy. <laughs> Take your notes. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. We're we're ready for the for the presentation. Perfect. Uh, Gerald leads everybody into the back room. I include. Ivy included. Ivy included. Everybody goes into Gerald's lab. This is the first time you've seen Gerald's lab in a while. Yeah. It is a mess. It is a wreck. You see a little tiny corner that you can very clearly tell is Jimmy's corner. You know, you've got like deconstructed grenades in there. Uh, you've, <laughs> you've got like a bunch of styrofoam stacked up and you don't know what that's for. Uh, and you just see written on a whiteboard, 100 fire alarms uh, just on the whiteboard and underlined like three times. Uh, Jimmy just kind of like smiles really proudly and like, like nods. <laughs> Light a ball. <laughs> Flathead screwdriver. No. You sitting on your desk is just like a microwave that's just been completely melted from the inside out. <laughs> um, Dude, that's nice. Throughout the laboratory, you see countless bottles of beer and uh, like leftover takeout. Gerald has been burning the candlestick at both ends just like you, but he's not as neat about it. And uh, Jimmy is there along the... Just Jimmy's along for the ride. Yeah. Um, you see in the corner, tired and exhausted in his test tube, a bare naked, barely naked, Viking. Whoa, what the fuck? What have you been doing? This is my good friend Bartold. Uh, he is a... Uh, he is a Viking. Not, like, in the metaphorical sense, like, oh, he's, you know, he's a man who grew a beard. Um, he is a literal Viking. Dad, what the hell is this? Son, quiet. Bartold is, uh, is helping us work on a project really quickly. Doesn't seem like he's helping. Yeah, it seems like Oh, you trust me, he's him. helping. Hey! Listen, kid. I trust your father. You're here as a guest. Bartold's all right, all right? He's just helping me out with a little project. Sir, do you remember when Arthur and I sold you the Age of Fire? Um, 
the um, it was for for like growing growing crops faster. I was like, yes, um, we we adapted it in many different ways. Uh, we also used it to you know reverse expiration dates, things like that. It was it was a nice household gift, you know. We are making new moves here. Rather than reversing time for a singular object and increasing time for said object. I wanted to do more. Not only did I want to reverse certain things, but I wanted to go back myself and see things for myself. Barthold is a living remnant of an era long gone. His Elden Clan is dead, but this man is still alive. We are in a new age in which Time travel is not just possible, but at our fingertips. The only caveat is that it takes an extreme battery to fuel this bad boy. And that's where Barthold comes in. Believe it or not, Barthold has this magnificent ability to just provide energy to anything he touches. And that's what I have all of you here to witness today. Maybe. Pick a date, any date, any random date in time. No, I don't like messing around with time. It's sacred, it should, you should move on. Richard sits up. April 14th, 1997. <laughs> Anything for you, sir? Any location in mind? Uh, Paris, France. Um, Gerald goes over to the little machine and begins to type in uh, the exact date that Richard Foxtrot said. Bartold, your test tube activates again. The heat starts to drain oh, your body. Oh, uh, you feel sweat dripping down your body and electricity shooting into the walls around you. A giant metal frame behind Gerald lights up purple and it begins to fade into this beautiful setting. You guys see a young Richard Foxtrot having dinner with a beautiful woman, a woman that you recognize as your mother. Richard, in this distant memory, gets down on one knee and proposes. You look up at your father and you see just a, a little smile smirk on his face. Dad, is that you? <laughs> Being your mother, son. So, um, Gerald, right now we're just viewing this, correct? We're not interacting. It's like, <laughs> well, sir, that is one thing that we can use this for. Yes, we can use it to view the past, but we can also travel to it. But that takes significantly more energy um, than just a fading memory. Um, how about, you know, traveling back and forth? Is that possible? Oh, yes, sir. He pulls a little remote out of his pocket uh, with a keypad of dates and a red button on the top. This is how you can travel back and forth from any time period you'd like. But again, it takes an extreme burst of energy. Would anybody like to see a demonstration? You! Alex, right? Alex? Alec? Um, Alex, yeah. What's something you're really passionate about? You know, maybe a test that didn't go quite your way in school, or, or... You know, when I was your age, I really, really, I looked forward to a happy future, you know? You know, something where all your dreams have come true. What? Like a happy place. Like a happy place. Is there a specific time period that you would like to see yourself? Uh, do I need to, like, give you a date or something? <laughs> just, just anything. Uh, Disneyland. I mean, I do like Disneyland a 
lot. Would you like to see the opening? October 1st, 1997. Yes, sir. 71, excuse me. Yeah, please, 1971, October 1st. Wait, are you, wait, Dad, is this for real? Like, don't fuck with me, you know, I can't. <laughs> I, how safe is this? Listen, this is... Not for me. Whatever okay. happens in this room stays in this room. Understood? understood. You understood, right? Uh, uh, yeah, you know? yeah. It doesn't answer my question. Ivy, relax, okay? Your brother and I worked on this, and I'm here to finish it. Yeah, but he's not here. We can change history. That's not always... We can bring him here, Ivy. Without saying another thing, Jail presses the button, activates it. Bart, make a constitution saving throw. Oh, well, I'm proficient. Yeah. Sorry, so. I wanted to go to Disneyland. No, it's fine, it's fine. You got the date right, October oh, 1st. 14. Oh, that's a 14. Bart, the energy begins draining from your body, more so than ever before. You are being tortured. As the life is being drained out of you, what do you see? What do you think about? Probably my daughter. In the exact moment that you think about your daughter, an extreme burst of energy comes out of you, something you've never felt before, more than just when you go into a rage, but this is true passion. You are thinking about your daughter, and then all of the lights go off. Um, I have... No, I can see the dark. <laughs> you have dark vision. I do have dark vision. Damn. You see as power goes out throughout yeah. the entire facility. Uh-huh. The emergency lights boom, kick on, bright red. Okay. You watch as the different test tubes and doors, housing many different creatures, everything around the lab opens. Bartold, your test tube opens. <sighs> The lab to Gerald's laboratory opens. Uh-huh. Everything is off. Everybody go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, oh fuck. Okay. Oh, shit. Uh, oh. 21. 21? 21. Uh, 19. 21. Okay. 21, 21, 19. 19. All of the doors, everything unlocks, opens. The pen for the mooshlings has opened up and they are now roaming free. Mushroom, who was, you know, exploring the garden, is now being chased by bacon and waffles. That is purple and green, uh, respectively. Purple is bacon, green is waffles. Yes. And pancake is by uh, hash brown side. Okay. The little trees have ripped themselves out from the garden, and they are now walking around just ready for violence. You know, they've been bored. And these are these little amalgamations. These two guys were created by Jimmy and Gerald's lack of caution. Their extremely messy laboratory creates these weird, gross amalgamations of rats, dirty dirty uh, bottles, trash, takeout food, and they create like a little, a little rat king. Because I've all now placed on the board as Gerald begins to ready up his portal with all the energy he has taken from Bartold. And we begin with Bartold. Alright, I'm gonna stare Gerald in the face. I'm coming for you later. And I'm going to uh, use my movement to get to that one if I can. Go right ahead. Uh, do I do diagonal or. Oh, yeah, sure, run One, two. two. So you go up to the first bathroom hole? I go up to the first bathroom hole and I am going to. I'm gonna I'm gonna grapple him. I'll, I'm gonna grapple the first. Bad or attempt to do that. Or, oh, you grapple successfully. I don't have to make a roll for that? No, oh. you, no it, they rolled uh, that one. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so I have them grappled. Yeah. Alright, so you go ahead and grapple them. They are now grappled. Next up is Ivy. It is your turn. Yes. I want to cast Poison Spray, uh, which is uh, within 10 feet, you extend your hand at, towards a creature, and Noxious Gas um, comes from your palm. The, they have to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, they rolled a 10. My constitution is 12. Alright, so they... How much damage did they take? 1d12, so let me roll. 10. Alright, th- this first badger mole yes. takes... Alright, 
The first bad, uh, the first little rat king is looking absolutely destroyed right now. It is an amalgamation of all the gross things Gerald and Jimmy have done in this laboratory. <laughs> and just to add poison spray on top of it, that's like putting a pesticide on a gross garden. You know, yeah. they are they are starting to to weaken and disperse. Um, we then go over to the mushrooms. The mushrooms, correct. Sorry. Um, so for this, can I? So pancakes is defending half right now. Right? Yes, as bacon and waffles are chasing. Uh, I want to move them together, just like further away. Can I honestly just get them to hide for now? Go right ahead. Use up their movement, and then. Two, three. And you would like them to hide. If that's possible. I would have to ask for a stealth check against check. their perception. Let me see what they have. Listen. Doesn't matter. I'm rolling so bad. I got a Let's go. They got a nat one. Oh, hell, hell yeah. Two okay. nat ones in a row. They're All right. blind. They <laughs> just can't see a thing. All right. So that wraps up for the mooslings. Uh, yeah, there's not much else they can do right now. All right, perfect. And now we move over to Alex Foxtrot. Oh, dear God. What the hell is going on, bruh? Okay, I don't want to be here, okay? I just want to kind of be like the mooslings. I see them go off and hide, and I kind of just want to join them because I do not want to fight right now. Fair enough. Lucky enough, you and your father had the same instinct. As you can see, Richard Foxtrot is not on the board. Yes. When the lights went off, he disappeared. Dad, what the fuck? You don't know if he's hiding, you don't know where he is. Dad. Richard Foxtrot is gone. What the heck? Oh my god. Okay, yeah, I'm fighting for myself. I can't, I don't know who any of these people are. This is, I need to hide. I need to hide. So I'm going to just move three, right? I think minus three. Uh, you have 30 feet, so that is six. Six. Wow. Okay. Oh, uh, and, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, moving closer to the mooselings. Yeah. All right, and you now have an action and a bonus action. Um, I think as an action, I want to call out to these little mushroom guys right here, like, hey, where are y'all going? Are you going for a way out? Or like, who the fuck are you? I'm Alex, it's it's nice to meet you. You guys are really cool. Fuck but like, you! Where's the red one? Oh my god, I've had enough of this. Have you seen one of us but red? One of us was red. Yeah, yeah, they went that way. I just, I, I was trying to go Thanks, buddy! Wait, I'll follow you. Take me with you. You'll fall. All right, fuck it. Uh, and does that conclude your turn? Yes, that concludes my turn. All right, we now move on to Jimmy. I want to use chromatic orb. Let's go ahead and make some rolls. Who are you throwing that at? This one. All right. I'm going to, well, I can choose what. Uh, that one is actually currently grappled by Bart, so you are going to have advantage with your roll. Hell yeah. So that's when you roll d20 twice, and you pick the higher number. Heck yeah. Do you want to borrow one? 19? Okay, well, unless you roll a nat 20, you got it. Hells yeah. All right, 19. All right, so you roll a 19. Go ahead and roll 3d8. And that's how much damage you deal. <laughs> you could easily kill this fool right now with one with one roll. Gotcha. Max roll 20. Max roll. 2, 2, 8. 2, 2, 8. So that would 12. be 12 damage. This guy is looking astronomically fucked up. Hell they yeah, are, dude. They are scrambling. They woke up in this world completely clueless. All they heard were bright, bright lights and a loud sound, and they just chose violence. And now they are they are being crippled as we speak. We move on to Gerald. Jimmy, we gotta go. We gotta get out of here. Power up the machine, please. What are you doing? I'm a monster. <laughs> Jimmy, we don't need to worry about them right now. You and I need to get out of here. Where are we gonna go? What do you mean, where are we going to go? In the machine. Where do you want to go? We could go anywhere. Well, it is dark, and there is no power, so I don't know what you expect us to do. Jimmy, I need your help to power this thing, okay? Just please reconnect the wiring. No. Oh. Ivy. Will you help me? Please. Please. How am I meant to trust you? You never trusted me. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, J- 
Gerald. Oh my god. Gerald uh, splashes on himself some potions that he had bring up in his pocket, and he now has for the next eight hours. He now has mage armor, oh, which fuck. means. Dude, uh, what it's is mage? It's the same. He has a buff to his AC. So, so Gerald like, is now extreme. He really is, he is safe. He has essentially coated himself in some sort of protection. Uh, that is his action. He is now going to use his movement to get down from the platform. Uh, Bartold, you were right there, right? Yes. Okay, so we're just going to assume around here, this area is where your tube was. All right, so Gerald is making his way to the cable cord connection between the two of them. Okay. All right, uh, and that will conclude Gerald's turn, and we will move on to... Bacon and waffles. <gasps> you directed them towards the two of them. I so did. it looks no way. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, can you go ahead and move both bacon and waffles six spaces oh. towards? Oh. It landed. <laughs> uh, question: Do we know if these ones are good or bad? Yeah, they are. They're just in for violence, you know. Oh, okay, they're here. The New Yorkers. Uh, can you blame like, them? Can I like? Uh, Try to. Can I, I know it's not my turn, but can I speak uh, to. I would say before your turn. Okay, cool. Okay. No worries. Um, so, bacon and waffles. What's the, what is the range on some of their attacks? They don't have too much range. Um, it's like, hey, come along, buddy! You said you weren't gonna join us! Come on up, us! Oh, God. Okay, it's dark. I can't see. I'm just taking my time, okay? <sighs> Fucking humans. Uh, we move on to the Badger Bear. Bart, this one is currently grappled. and has a chokehold. Alright, uh, they are going to try and escape. And, uh, Do they roll against my strength? They roll against your strength. 17. Uh, yeah, they do not escape, um, and uh, they're still pretty much grappled. This one by Ivy. Uh, it's going to take just a little bit of movement to get right here, right in front of you, and it is going to... Take a swing at you. Uh, Ivy, what is your armor class? 12. <sighs> okay. They... Oh, shit. They hit it exactly. Fuck. Okay. And they do 1d12 of damage. Ivy, you take 6 damage. Oh, oh my god. Okay, you have 3 health. I have 3 health. Uh... You have 3 health. I have All 3 right. health. Uh, that concludes the Badger Bears, and now we move on to the... Uh, that's that one, okay. We now that's move on to the New Yorker trees. Hey, buddy! What's going on? You're the, you're the little blonde boy, aren't you? Oh, little blonde boy working for the big time scientist. This one hears the mockery and just starts coming over. He's like, hey, what a do, little blonde boy? Yeah, I'm you sorry. never, you never wanted us, huh? You never, you never put us in the sunlight. I'm sorry. Look at us, we got legs now, huh? You never thought we'd have the legs, but we got legs. We hid the legs because we were waiting for a moment, and now this is our moment to use our legs. Uh, oh, what? Just what? The first one misses, but the second one hits you. Um, he, he, like, essentially, with his tree arm, just tries to slam you in the side with his bark. And you take... That is not a D8. That is a D8. You take four damage, Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, the next one, you see this little tree creature. He hops down. One, two, three, four. He goes... Hey, Ivy! You're like a mom to us, Ivy. How you doing? Good. Can you uh, help us take down these guys over here? Like this little Do a little badger moves? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, I'll give you a... charisma. Okay. Oh. oh, wait. What were you going to say? I'll give you so much water. So Ooh, much sunlight. All right. All right. Roll with advantage. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> Give it to. Eh, fuck you! I can make water! I'm a tree! I make tree sap! You wanna see some of my tree sap? The sap is in the water! Um, (laughs) They're going to show off their tree sap with poison spray. Oh, Um, Oh, 
question. Go ahead, make a constitution saving throw. Me? Yes. yes. Oh, for just this one? Uh, yes, for Ivy. Okay. Uh, that's one. Okay. Uh, 16. They're rolling so bad right now. Thank God. Uh, you're yeah, you're good. Uh, they're like, oh, whoopsies! Oh, well. My bad! And we now go back in the initiative order to Barthold. Can I just swing at the, the badger I'm about to have in the chokehold? Uh, yeah, go right ahead. Okay. You have advantage since you have been grappled. Cool. Uh, it's gonna be a 19. <laughs> you hit. You Not fully hit. That's just natural. Uh, go it, I think uh, for unarmed strikes, it's 1 plus my uh, whatever my strength modifier is. That's currently 3, so it's gonna do just 4 damage. So You're gonna do 4 damage? Yeah. Uh, to this bad guy right here? Yeah. Um,. What do you do to kill this to kill this so amalgamation of dirt and grime? I have him in the chokehold. Just got him. And I just like Ooh. almost like snap his neck. Ooh. All of the dirt and grime just disperses, coating you in like a layer of dirt and grime oh. and mud. Something that you as a Viking are very uh, much yeah, used I'd to. Love it. You finally feel like kind of like back at home. Huh. Um, and uh, so they are now. Out. Cool. Oh, I saw my movement so and my bonus action. Dope. Bonus action, sanctuary onto you. Thank you. Okay, what is that? Uh, um, so I ward a creature against uh, a, a 30 feet, right? One, two, three, yeah, four, five. Yeah, literally perfect. Yeah. 30 feet. Thank you. So uh, any creature who's going to make an attack against you has to make a wisdom saving throw first. Dope. Cool. So it's going to help you a little bit. Okay. And I'm so... I see Gerald running over to something, right? Yes. I'm going to go up to him uh, with the rest of my movement. So it's one, two, three, four. Uh, I'm just going right. to try to, like, block his path. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, we now have Ivy. Ivy, it's your turn. Am I able to do care wounds on myself? Uh, I think so. Um... It doesn't say, it just says a creature you touch regains a number of... I touch myself. Exactly. I, I yeah, just, you So can. I touch myself. Yeah, um, you can kill yourself. Consensually. Just to, just to be safe, I feel uh. like it's a good idea. I get, <laughs> I get, I get full back. Hey. I get six back. Hey. All right, I'm perfect. back at nine. All right. So I'm just, I'm going to be over here now. And then for the mooshlings, for um, pancakes and, wa- and hash brown. Uh, for hash brown... I'm gonna have him use second wind, which is a bonus action. Ooh, he's a fighter. And, yeah, and he regains a uh, one d ten plus HP. All right, go right plus ahead. Plus one HP. So d ten. Oh, nice. Yo. Perfect. So I think full health. Yeah, back at full health. You got it. Uh, and will that conclude the Mooshling story? Uh, yes. But can Ivy like try to talk to Bacon and, uh, and waffles? waffles? Try to like. You're gonna be a while ways away, but yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, I'm like yelling. Yeah. Go right <laughs> like, Um. Like trying to, con- I want to convince them to not fight. Stop fighting! Like you guys are brothers. Just you can look out for one another. One another. Look out for one another. You picked favorites from day one. You named us after food. How do you think that makes us? A mushroom that's supposed to be ingested medicine! And you name us after food! Not to eat. My name is Bacon! That's not like, oh, I'm naming me after like a a pig with bacon! (laughs) I don't care! I'm done! I'm sick of this! And Hash Brown deserves all the love because Hash Brown's the cute one! We're all cute! We're mushrooms! Pancake stabs. <laughs> <gasps> that's, that's Pancake awesome. stabs bacon, and yeah. bacon just goes, <gasps> Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> it's not your turn. Yeah, that's perfect. What the heck is going on? You guys are mushroom people, Kelly. Why, why do you have a freaking dagger on you, bro? I hate humans! Dude, oh my god. Oh my god. Am I going to let this happen? Um, listen... I was going to, like, pick you guys up and, like, separate each other, but, like, you're dead. You need urgent care. Um. Okay, <laughs> he's fine. He only has a He's fine. Okay, if you're fine, I'm going to go after the red one. 
I'm gonna go after the red one. He seems like he's the little pickle of the group and he needs help. Alright, alright, alright. He's like, no! Go after. No! I got so scared. I'm gonna kill it. Oh. I'm gonna kill it. No. Do, do, do. Here, let me just scooch by y'all. Okay, excuse me. Um, Are you gonna take a yeah, dash one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, My action, I am going to take away the dagger. Uh, disarm. Disarm. Okay, uh, that's gonna be dexterity, and then they're gonna make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, that's, whoa. Uh, wait, where is for, that? Just for dexterity. Oh, plus, oh, I got 23. Oh, oh my god. Okay, yeah, like, you, let's go. You, so, uh, the little moosling warriors are armed with sharp sticks that they had pulled from the garden, and you grab the stick out of Bacon's arm and pull it out Freaking from his child. hands. You remind me of I'm someone. <laughs> <laughs> what does he look like? Yo, he what do I remind you of, huh? Yo, okay, listen. So this is kind of a funny story, actually. Like, there was a guy in a Nemo costume, and you just <laughs> remind me exactly like him because you're a little prick. Don't mess on others, okay? Drops the dagger. <laughs> he just picked it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right, Jimmy, it's now your turn. You're surrounded by New Yorker Borrow tree creatures. Drops. I'm going to take on... Um, Oh. Three steps forward. Are you gonna take the disengage or are they gonna hit you with opportunity attacks? That's two They're gonna they're gonna hit me with opportunity because I wanna use magnified gravity. Oh no. Okay. So. Jimmy, what's uh, your armor class? That's AC, right? Yes. Eleven? But I can't know. It's eleven? Mm -hmm. Alright. They're gonna make they're, you're gonna take two opportunity attacks. One of them hits. Oh fuck. They both hit. Oh Great. fuck. Oh, uh and then they are going to do Five damage. Okay. That's, uh, that's okay. I can, yeah, I can, okay. I can, I have zero. Just reasonable. I got with the mushrooms. I'm at two. Oh, oh my god. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna use Kira. <laughs> <laughs> so I can um, help, you have used movement, or are you gonna take an action? I have more health than all Damn. of them. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. Both of them need to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, what is your constitution? It's against your wisdom, oh, yeah, correct? Yeah. Uh, what is your they wisdom? They have to make a constitution save. It's yes, not. against his wisdom. No, it's just you have to make a constitution. Oh, yeah, against yeah. whatever his spell His wisdom are. is... 13. 13. Your wisdom is 13? Okay, yeah. one of them makes it, the other one does not. Okay, so it's 2d8. 2d8 attack on one of them? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I got 5 and 6, so 11. Uh, which one do you want to kill? The creature does, uh, the one that failed still takes half damage. Oh, no, oh okay. It does, yeah, it still takes half damage. Alright, uh, so... Do, 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 do. One... Two, six. Good shit, Jimmy. Let's go, let's go. Uh, so, okay, one of them is dead, and the other one takes half of eleven. I'll round it up to six. Uh, so they take six damage. Um, so, one of them... You want to kill one? <laughs> <laughs> very personal right there. Uh, Slit. So that one, you amplify gravity. You use your glove and you reach out. Like and super. waves start to shake out of your Jimmy's, your, your JJ gloves. <laughs> your hands begin to shake as all of a sudden the air becomes tighter. Gravity starts pulling down on them. One of them, their weak bark... <laughs> Crushes against the ground. Whoa, that's a crazy. You just hear like, because that's like I still I. Spent no, years my brother. We just got them. our legs, bro. <laughs> uh, the other one is now extremely pissed off at you. We so go scared. now to Gerald and Bartold. The two of them are over here having a little kissing contest. Um, no. no, so Gerald is tr is trying to. Quickly plug in his machine and power it up. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I can't do Gerald it. is going to. Hmm. You know what? It, rather than use disengage, Gerald is going to use dash. Okay. As his action. I will get an opportunity attack. You will get an opportunity attack. So, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. They are going to go up to this machine and use their bonus action to plug back in the battery to the portal. Okay. You got your opportunity attack. Go ahead and roll for it. So 
I'm going to use a feature of Warcaster, which is one of the feats I took, to use a spell as an opportunity. This is going to be my last spell slot, because I think you guys are fine for healing. I, I was, can, I I was can gonna heal say healing Jimmy work. if needed. So I'm mm -hmm. going to hit him with a Guiding Bolt. Uh, range spell attack. Uh, target takes... Okay, so I have to make a range spell attack, which is going to be... Uh, my... Whoop. Whoop. Need to see my spell attack. Is it a constitution saving throw? Um, no, I, it's it's like an attack. Okay. But, uh, I'm going to use this die. I have a plus four to hit. It's going to be a 21 to Let's hit. Let's go. Okay. Is 21 hit? 21 does hit. Thank Dope. God. Okay. So he takes 46 damage. Not 40, like 4d6. Oh, okay. It's like 40. He takes 46 full damage and I kill him. And uh, anyone else who attacks a jail will get advantage on whatever attack they make. All right. So cool. I'm going to roll the d6. One. I have exactly enough. Yep, okay. Oh, it's going to offer some. <laughs> and this one is going to be... Uh, it's four, three, seven, so eight, uh, ten. Ten damage. All right. Not the best, but... No, it's not bad. Yeah, that hits Gerald hard, but he is still determined. He plugs in his machine. The power from the battery starts moving towards his portal, and purple light starts to fill the room. He is using your own energy against you, and it is now uh, time for Bacon and Waffles to make their move. Bacon uh, uses their bonus action to pick up their spear that you dropped on the ground in front of them. Oh, crap, damn it. Okay, that was supposed to be cool, like a mic drop. You guys weren't supposed to take um, it back. Yeah. Bacon's gonna go ahead and attack you. Oh. Uh, what is your armor class? My armor, that's that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 13. Yeah, yes. oh. yeah, 13. Your armor class is 13. Yeah. All right, Bacon misses. Oh, slay. Uh, and then uh, huh. Waffles is going to move towards Pancakes. Can you move green towards, towards blue? All right, Waffles is going to attack Pancakes. Waffles deals Nine damage to oh, pay Okay, he has two health. He's two health? It's two. Oh, All right, and that will conclude the Mooshling's turn. All right, we now are back to Bard's hold. Okay, so I see Gerald going for the thing. Yes. Okay. Gerald is um, plugged in the machine. It is going. Get the fuck back here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna move towards him. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna swing at him. You're gonna swing at him? Told you I'm coming for you. Are you in a rage right now? Uh I can bonus action. Oh wait, but if I do it, he's you lose concentrate. Right? Not not that I might charge him or something, because my my magical energy or something. We don't know that. Do I want to? Up to you. I think, if you think Gerald has a very, very high AC right now because oh, of, that's true. Uh because of what he casted on himself. I think Bard hold would in this moment probably rage because well, he fucking trapped me. He take your best fucking kill you. <laughs> Bard hold goes into a rage. Bard All right, bonus action rage. So I rage uh, my bonus action. So bonus action movement stuff gone. And then uh, I'm just gonna roll for an attack. Uh, just just a fucking two. Oh no! Uh, Gerald so is going to roll a dexterity saving throw right now. Gerald rolls a 15. You do, you are in a rage. Yeah, I'm raged. Bartold goes into a rage. Lightning bursts <laughs> out. Your amulet, now that you're out of the tube, is finally glowing bright blue. You feel Thor's power flowing through you. This man trapped you, tortured you, took you to a strange new land. Yeah. You want to see your daughter. I want to see my daughter. And now he took you away from her. You don't know where you are, what's going on. You feel the rage. Fueling through your body, your electricity is back in within you. You go to swing at Gerald. Gerald turns around, holds the charge, the plug I knew between this the happen. test tube yeah. and the portal, and you punch it. Electricity flows through the machine. I have to do it. I have to do it. And that's where we end the episode. Oh! Oh, oh shit.